be a bit like Bob Ross. I could paint the picture. A lot of people want to see how I paint the picture. Um, I want to say, I've said it a lot before, but if it wasn't for Fallstone on the forums, none of this would have happened really. Um, it, the way we came together with it was great. Um, I wrote a little program just fiddling around with the graphics extension ROM one day, sort of turn of events. And I just thought, wow, no one really did much of that graphics extension ROM. Um, I saw a demo of some colours like in the ROM, like tiles. And I thought, wow, you know. Um, and no one did much mode 2 art back in the day. I don't seem to remember seeing much. A lot of it was AMX and Mode 1, Joe Lavery, because uh, I remember the old days, as we all do, Acorn user and the AMX mouse. Um, I did a lot of stuff with the AMX mouse. I, I will revisit that, I think, um, at some stage and maybe start, maybe venture into Mode 1 again. We'll see. <laughs> um, but uh, me and Fallstone together, I wrote this little art program and I was really struggling with it. I mean, I'm not a programmer, but I managed to make the mouse move. I managed to, I, I did document this on the forum, so you've probably read it, but managed to get like a really basic thing of like being able to paint a blob. And I think even feel, feel with the graphics extension one on the BBC. And um, um, and then um, Fallstone wrote to me, uh, it was really nice, you know, and said, hey, Mike, I really like what you've done this first attempt. It's great, you know, and um, I thought it was a bit rubbish. And he said, do, do you want me to try to see if I can help you? And so we, we, we built up this nice sort of relationship where he said, all right, if you, if you can paint me a picture, I'm, I'll try and do a bit of code, you know, and uh, that was about three years ago. So, um, so the first program, initially we wrote this on the BBC and it was using the graphics extension on and we got quite far with it and um, we got to the point, the thing was I, I um, wanted to start painting with a tablet a bit and I got I have I've got some really rubbish, cheapo tablets here, because um, there's you know buying a buying a uh, you know one of the whack on ones with a screen is a fortune. So um, you could keep just ask me questions, anyone. By the way, as I'm off the wall. but um, so I had these cheap Atom tablets, and I thought, and I said to him. I was trying to run BBEM and we were trying to run our program and when you would draw, um, it, you know, they, they were just so slow. Um, so we were wondering what to do about that because as I started asking for more things from him, I said, what about a, a menu with palette of colours so we can pick colours from a palette? and um, we we started hitting a bit of a limit with the BBC um, and BBEM um, with the amount of memory, and it was all we'd done in BASIC. I mean, um, so then we moved on to BBC BASIC, and that was great because um, he he uh, I've got the BBC BASIC version. By the way, if anyone wants to download this program. Um, that I use to do the pictures, you can go to the internet and you can just go to Google and just type art for windows. And I chiefly use this program now to do all my pictures or a lot of them. Um, I'd quite like to go back to a BBC Micro and get another one. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm always toying with that, you know, should I really be 
doing this on the original hardware um, up to a point we were using BBC Basic for ages um, for Windows and that was great and then we hit a bit of a I think it was more of a speed thing really because I couldn't paint my pictures on my cheap Atom tablets at a reasonable speed the paint was lagging so Fallstone said okay we're going to have to move this over to Power Basic right um, and we can get you the speed that you need so at the moment he's he's carried on in that and the program outputs to bbc micro um sometimes i go back to the bbc basic version just for nostalgia anyway you can download it the program there and uh you get the um art for windows folder and there's lots of different versions in here but this is the one i use art forever version 4 um so yeah that's what we're using at the moment and we added to, i mean he added so much cool stuff in it as you've seen but um so so you presented with this um screen and um you've got layers here now which have been very useful part of me thinks am i cheating you know um sometimes i'll paint pictures without them but it is useful having layers um as I'll show you a bit later. Um, he's got an extra toolbox here for things. Um, there's color cycling, as you've seen in the pictures. Um, and it's all at mode two resolution, this. So um, you can also save, I've got them scattered around loads of places, but a few people have been asking me, but somewhere I've got all these pictures as BBC format across loads of hard drives but i'm so chaotic one day i must get them together just whack them somewhere for everyone um so so when you start the program you can choose your brush size i mean a lot of this stuff you can see i did the icons Hallstone did all the coding um so let's just do a picture um as i've been watching people today and listening to you all I've, I've had my art screen up and I've painted a picture and you'll see it later. Here's one I did later, you know, here's one I did previously, but um, we'll do the sort of same picture. Sometimes you can load in a, um, a picture and trace around it if you want onto a layer. Sometimes I do that, but I just like to just fire it open and see what happens. I think the magic when you do that. But yeah, give it a go. I use this BBC Micro. Everyone might know this converter, but if you convert a program to this, uh, to this converter and save it, so like I'm doing here, stretch it. Um, I might dither it so I can see a bit more. So it, you know, if people aren't that skilled, or you just want to give it a go, or even, I mean, I sometimes even do it. It's not a question of being skilled or not. Just whatever whatever it takes um save it as bbc format there so pick it's amazing what he did here to allow people and then you can go into the program and say okay i'm going to load i'm going to select bbc format current layer because you can load more than one i whiz through this quite quickly but i think when you play around you can see layer one now is that picture in mode 2 format so you know you could you could use that and start painting over it if you want um i'm going to clear it for now um i'll show you the different stuff so i'm going to whiz for it really quickly how i normally do a picture and there's no magic to it i mean i think a lot of it's quite formulaic really but i would say that but um so like if i sometimes i look at pictures um as i'm painting them but not often i'll just do it and see what happens but so i was i i came across these pictures and i thought wow that looks quite cool be good to try and do a version of that um and then so i i think to myself okay how am i going to do this um what's the best thing often put the sky on the first layer so it's gonna be quite quick right i'm going to click quite quickly here but you've got the palette down here You've got all your shades here. You can even 
select, um, you know, uh, make your own patterns. That was quite cool. I haven't really got into using that yet, but you can. I, I need be mean to do some more pictures like that with the patterns. Um, a very useful thing that I use all the time is the translucent tool. This is amazing, this book. A bit like D paint from the Amiga when you had the, you know, you can, if you've got that translucent thing ticked there, um, any color you pick on the bottom row here um, will come through translucent. So, I mean, I use that, I think that's the single most feature I use out of everything in these pictures. So, um, so we got gradient fill. So you pick your first colour. See, I've I've just got you two gradients there at the moment. So I'm just going to whiz through a few of the tools. So you can see I've got blue there and purple selected there. If I was to select uh say yellow and in my second colour, so yellow selected there, but my second colour I'll choose this black on the bottom row you can see that you get this really cool effect. I'm still amazed by what he did, some of the things here. Um, I, you know, I reckon I'm going to challenge him to see if we can get us across back to the BBC Micro, but we won't be able to do all of it, but um, it would be quite good to get another a Micro VTech Cup and a BBC again. I do miss them. Um, do, do you mind if I ask what is your input controller? Are you a are you using a mouse? Yeah, it's a good. A that's a good question. It's funny, you know. Yeah, I do use a tablet. I've got one. Um, this Atom tablet I've got. I think I've got a. Uh, I bought it really cheaply, like a um, Lenovo ThinkPad Two, about thirty quid off eBay. Most of my pictures, a lot have been done with that, but. Sometimes when I just want to do a picture, I find it quite hard to paint with the mouse, but it's the most immediate thing, isn't it? You're at the internet, just reading away, and you think, I'll just try a picture now. Um, and some of the pictures, of course, you're a lot better with the mouse. A lot of the time when I'm using the line tool, um, you can get... So it depends what it is, but for a picture like this, maybe I'd use the mouse. Um, I'll show you why. Um, but and another thing I've been doing recently is I thought, because I quite like having the computer on all the time in this program, so it's a bit of a hassle with the tablet because then you've got to export it, upload it to Google Drive. I haven't really sorted it. It's all right when I'm painting a picture, but I just thought, I really want to just do it on the computer. So I've, I've been using VNC with my iPad, and um, I did VNC to the screen last week and start painting on the iPad with a um you know cheap stylus um but i tried google uh remote desktop but the clicks it didn't like those so um so that might be something if you want to try setting up vnc server and um using your ipad or your finger you know um i'm trying to get um this program working in uh sdl at the moment um in bbc basic and trying to turn it into a portrait because I don't like holding the tablet in um, landscape. I find it quite awkward. But anyway, I've 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 changed my mind over the years so many times asking for things. Uh, I think Paul Stone's a bit busy nowadays. But um, so anyway, yeah, most of the time I'm using the mouse. So I'm um, sorry, I'm going to get behind. So let's do a really quick picture. Um, so layer one, okay. Let's do a gradient. I might select blue, I might select, I don't know, red, and draw a gradient there. If I, you can undo, so uh, do that, and then you might say, okay, let's go from red to yellow. This is quite, I, won't, I didn't quite do like this before, but you could already see, that looks cool, doesn't it? I haven't even done the thing. Um, uh, so, yeah, and then you might say, okay, let's go to... Um, let's go to number two now and let's get the gradient tool and tell you what, this is really good hack this. 
Uh, so let's just say if I get the gradient tool and choose two colors, black and red. So I've got red there and, uh, sorry, let's just try that black there. I haven't got the translucent tool on. Well, so I might just start doing it. So I'm gonna slide this all the way down, you know, the, the brush size, otherwise the squares can look really big. And um, let me just go back, I'm just, there's differences with the blacks here. So I'm just gonna select a solid black right up here not the ones on the bottom, uh, and um, and a red here. So you've got solid, have I done that right? Let me just draw one and see, no. Nope. Hmm. Let's just see, what I wanted that, yeah. You have to fiddle around with it a bit, but that one's black and that one's red there. So you can see, I'm gonna just do, now watch this, look, so if I, if I just, no, I'm not even going to look at what I'm doing here. Just, I'm just going to plonk loads of things on here. You know, it's like Bob Ross, isn't it? So, you know, chuck some of that there. Um, just select another colour, maybe make the squares a bit bigger at the front. I don't know. You could. I might be inclined to put that on an on on layer three and maybe do a gradient on layer two you know um so i could keep doing all of this but you get the idea blah 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 um and um build it up i might want to put some really light what light ones at the front there the yellows in there. i wasn't even thinking about what I was doing earlier when I was watching all of you a lot, I was just doing this basically, picking colours out and just plonking stuff down. So already, without really doing anything, you can see, yeah, let's fill these in. It's quite, you can do quite cool stuff with just like nothing. Uh, um, got any questions, anyone? While I'm, I'm just rabbiting on. Um, yeah, I noticed uh, a lot of Mode 7 uh, pictures lately from you. Yes, the mode se yeah, the Mode 7 stuff's interesting. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to get this bloke, this, I, I was talking to him last night, but uh, this TT Edit guy um, who's writing this new uh, teletext editor. I'm trying to get him. My big thing is animation. I really want to do animation in Teletext, and um, it can be quite time consuming. I, I use Movie Maker with Slippery Slug, um, which is good. But what I kind of want to do is sort of color cycling in Teletext, and that's a bit weird, but the sort of thing that I do with this. Would be nice to be able to do in teletext so um with the teletext stuff i might paint a picture i might convert it to teletext and then i might use edit tf um so anyway i'm running behind a bit here but um so let's say so let's say i've got some things here right now the other thing i'll say is i'm going to switch this qs on because this is quick save and i use this all the time so i just press s and it will save all of those layers in one go in the art folder here and you'll see it saves them there it saves them in bbc micro format and it saves them in png format as well um there is a slight issue with this program with this at the moment something to do transparency but i think i've been all right with it but it's interesting it does save in bbc format each of those layers, you know. Um, and I use that, as I'm going through it, I will keep saving in case I have to go back. Um, you've got a fill here. I don't know what that does. Uh, there's not much to this read. This saves single layers rather than um, the whole five layers, but I, you know, it's so small. Uh, so yeah, you can carry on painting that basically. Um, then something else I might do is uh, you see in a lot of my pictures, but let's say I get all that painted at the front there. I might then um, 
I've got 10 minutes, so let's see, let's see. So I might put some fog in. So let's go to, let's down this layer, but let's choose a translucent white and solid. So basically, if I do a rectangle, you can see in the background, now I could undo that, but you can see I put a bit of fog along there. And then I might say, okay, let's, Let's take the dithering down a bit and put a bigger band of fog above it. You get some really nice effects there. Um, I might even want to paint. You've got your paint brushes here. Sorry, I missed the most obvious one, but you've got your paint brushes here as well. So you might even want to put a bit of fog in like that there. Um, and your sizes. You've got an airbrush here. Um, I don't really use much of this stuff, but you can copy and paste in this. I haven't really used that very much, but you can select copy, copy an area, go to paste, and then and then hit that pencil key. And he did put copy and paste in there, which which is great. You know, I keep pestering to put more stuff in this, and I will do. <laughs> um, I can't think what else next. I'll, I mean, the teletexting would be really cool, but um, we'll see. And then, okay, so that's that. And then I might go to another layer. I'm gonna, I'll go back to my main uh, things again. Uh, just say the colors on the bottom are the cycle colors, the colors are the solid ones on the top. And you've got auto color cycling, I'll show you in a minute. So let's say we might paint a few clouds in on layer three. So. I bet everyone's probably thinking, oh, God, he makes it look so easy, this. But anyway, look, you're just going to whack a few clouds in, um, select a bit of white, and then push the, tra push the translucency up a bit, maybe. Yeah. Chuck, a, chuck some clouds there. I don't know. Um, and then we've got the rays in a minute. Um, and um, I might also... I might get a bright white, a much brighter white there, and go back to layer, layer two again, and just put it in right at the top of the horizon there, and wobble it a bit. It's probably a bit too bright that, but I, it's probably yeah. I, I I think really that needs to be even smaller, and you know just on the horizon there. Um, another thing I do pay attention to when I'm painting is um, I do pay attention to light. So in a lot of the pictures, I do put a highlight on the side of the building. So if I if I do a sun or something up here, let's do a bright sun and take the translucency off on layer three. If I do a bright sun and then I put the translucency on again, and I've got this, you can see what I'm doing here with the fill tool, and I'm going to take that down again a bit more. I mean, already you can say, well, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Um, so you can build up. So I might do that, and then I might decide. A lot of the pictures, I do use the, I do use highlights a lot because they can look quite. So the sun's there, so I might think, okay, I might even go to layer five and say, all right, I mean, this picture's quite light, but I might get that and say, right, I'm going to put a few little highlights on the sides of the building there. Let's drop the size of the brush. So you can see, you know, the sun might catch the sides of the building um, on this side because it's on, on nearer to the right hand side. Maybe on the left, maybe on the right hand side, we'll do some highlights on the buildings where the sun might be catching it on the other side. So I do think about these things as I'm painting them. Um, so already I've used a few layers there. I'm coming to the end soon. You need hours for this. But anyway, um, I might decide that I want blue, a bit more blue up the top there. Look, so I'm going to go down to the blue tool, the bottom, put translucency on. I don't know how well this will work. Sometimes you get like weird art, a bit of a weird artifact there. So um, I could just, I might leave that for now. Sometimes you do get that and you just think, oh, I'll just leave it, you know. Uh, but um, and then if I look at that picture, I might think, all right, it's a bit, it's a bit, there is a bit more blue in the background to this picture, really, as you go 
So I might be inclined to stick a bit more blue round about here, or I don't know what colour. Um, and maybe a, a bit at the side there, down here. Um, and then we've got the rays, right? So that I've got three minutes. So the rays, translucent. I might do some rays like this. Uh, I'm going to be really quick now. Um, say like that. Maybe those are a bit strong, but take those down a bit. Okay. Um, and then one important thing is one important thing actually. I might go right to the bottom with that. Do a very subtle ray. You know, and then choose the next one up, and then do one that is not quite. It's a bit denser in, so you can see like you get this nice sort of. You know, I'm not being very accurate there, but right. So that's that, and then you might want to put some. Uh, color cycle sun into this so select the pen tool you can either use the lines and the circles or you can draw the color cycles in yourself if you want I'll show you the automatic color cycle but let's take the translucency tool off I'll select the pen tool I'll select the color cycling tool and when I start drawing you can see if I often I'm doing this to the mouse slow and then fast so just so you might get the sun's rays coming out there. So once you've got your coloured cycle uh, image, you switch on the colour the play button, the little man, slide the slider up just to choose your colours here, hold the mouse button down. So you can see I've got a nice sort of sun ray going on there. And then I might say, okay, let's create a folder. Pick. Oh, <laughs> okay. We'll just new folder. Export it. And then all I end up doing is just export it. Call it P. It's not, and it just exports each color cycled frame, separate frames. So then I use a, a GIF maker on the internet, you know, animated GIF maker. Um, but yeah, you could save these. You could effectively save that as a BBC micro file, which I've got somewhere. And that, so you, I, you, you know, you select all the. Um, I'm going to run over, but select all the frames and make a GIF, and choose the speed. And you, and there you've got it. You know, uh, so um, so there it is. And then you can just to say you could go back there. You could say okay. Now, this is quite important. You go to take the quick save off and say, right, save. Save this as a final picture. Discard the transparency. So, save pick. That is the final picture you can post on Stardot. Or you could say, save it as a BBC micro file with merged. So, I could say, pick color cycle. And that is a BBC. It's all flattened down, it's ready to go. Load into a BBC that straight into BBEM, and you could display that. Um, so um, yeah, I, uh, that's basically how I do pictures, really. Um, uh, and uh, as I was talking, so here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so here we are. So as I was talking, watching you all, I was just bucking around, but I did that one there uh, with. Um, I'm going to post that on a, in a second. Star dot and. Um, I mean, mainly I was painting on, I didn't really use too many layers there. I, I was mainly painting on layer five there. I think I did the sky initially. Um, but it's nice, you can change the colors here as well of the cycle. So, um, yeah, and I'm, you know, I might say, all right, I just want a little bit more translucency at the front here. So, yeah, if I look at the image, just get a a very subtle white and just wash it across you know maybe a bit of yellow so um yeah but it's all really really sort of translucency and layers um any questions anyone well 
if there aren't any, I'll just read out what's been written in the chat because obviously that won't um, make it across to the video. Mm. Um, just a few comments um, from Robert. Oh, there you go. Virtual round of applause from Brian. <laughs> um, from Helpful. <laughs> Clint Worthwhile, talented. No, um, stop. Earlier on, we had um, Robert. Um, but if I did this, it would look a complete mess. Um, Pixel Blip has, has a natural talent for colour and shade. And um, I think, as I mentioned, a couple of my friends have dialed in, especially for this talk. And they messaged me privately, um, very much enjoying this. Thanks, Dave. And then um, on my phone, I've got a... I, I actually love to see people's creative processes um, coming together like this. Um, also want to thank Simon Sideburns, because it was his tip, his suggestion, um, that we invite you along to do a live demo. So, Simon, I hope it's, uh, it's met your expectations. He's nodding. <laughs> Well, I hope everyone can start painting some pictures because, um, yeah, it'd be good to see some pictures from everyone else so I can get on with my Music 5000, you know? <laughs> well, you've made me feel like I could even have a go. Oh, it, yeah, it's, look at it. I'm just painting with blocks. I haven't really done anything there. Yeah. Yeah, give it a go, you know. I oh, mean, who what, knows? That's probably all I'd do anyway. <laughs> well, what's very effective, I don't want to run over it, but, uh, you know, um, let's just say this. What's very effective, go on, I can show you this really quickly. I mean, if you can't do, you know, if you're not even, I mean, some of the my, my most popular images, so if I, if I, if I get a, a, the colour cycle tool, again, let's just switch colour cycling on. You know, some of the most popular images are just doing this sort of stuff, you know, like a bicycle, you know? <laughs> um, you know, and then draw. Let's draw some like wind. Yeah, let's draw some wind sort of blowing. Speed it up a bit. And he put. He did. You see this gap stuff here, but you can draw lines. You know, you can have lines with gaps in them um, of different speeds. So that's very good for creating an illusion of uh, something up front, and then bring down the gaps a bit and um, make things look like they're in the background more so um so you know just doing just drawing with the color cycling tool so much fun um and color so isn't color cycling amazing on bbc micro i mean the whole reason i got into it was i remember all those color cycling demos i remember that planets one i don't we, we all must remember that but it drew out a set of planets and then they all span i remember the first time i saw that and I think I kept that in my mind all these years and thought, wow, colour cycling was so cool, wasn't it? So, and yeah, it's proved to be, isn't it? It's, everybody goes mad for it on the internet, the colour cycle pictures. They're, I think the simplicity of them and the fact they're just eight frames and the illusion of movement when they're not moving. Um, yeah, anyway, look, I'm overrunning now, so there we are. But I'm going to about to post my picture up on Stardot, all right? <laughs> Right, thanks, Mike. Um, but I think we definitely need to invite you back for part, for part two. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. Times to look at, you know, to look Let at animation. Put, look at animation. Right. Yeah. I'll put my. There we are. I'll put my. I'll put my uh, light on there. My spotlight. So at least you can see me. Yeah. So yeah, there we are. Not too difficult. I hope everyone. Yeah. <laughs>